Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Knight. Uh, I'm a developer at Intopalo. Oh, great. We have some clipping problems, but <laughs> please ignore those. We'll, we'll take those out in post. OK, uh, so I'm here to talk for uh, 20 minutes or 15, maybe, about uh, Qt Creator, Cubes, and QMU. These are three tools I use every day, and that's why I call them tools for life. Because like most of you, I spend most of my time in front of my computer, uh, hopefully developing, sometimes doing other things. So uh, Cubes is sort of the star of the show here, and I'm going to briefly introduce it and then come back to it. Can I get a quick show of hands how many people are using Cubes? Maybe half? Awesome, guys. You don't even need to be here. This is going to be pretty lightweight. But uh, Cubes stands for Cute Build Suite. We call it Cubes because QBS doesn't have quite the same ring to it. <laughs> uh, it's a build artifact pipeline manager. I made that up. So the guys who actually make Cubes probably disagree with me about this, but that's what I think it is. Uh, it means that I can take files, like source code, and turn them into build artifacts and chain those all together in a pipeline. So I think that's pretty cool. And it allows you to write your projects in QML and JavaScript. So the same languages you're using every day for your QML apps, you can write your entire project in. Awesome. So that brings me to the Creator. Uh, creator is definitely the place to be if you're writing QML and JavaScript. It's the IDE of choice for Qt developers. To me, it's just plain the IDE of choice. And why is that? Well, I have a lot of reasons. Uh, syntax highlighting. Yeah, you can find syntax highlighters in other IDEs, but only Qt Creator does it right. Uh, autocomplete. Yeah, it makes me a lazy developer, but that's a lot fewer typos. Automatic white space cleanup. Got to love this. The sanity bot will not yell at me because I have saved my file inside Creator. Sometimes that means it removes the tabs that I intentionally put there and make files, but hey, what can you do? <laughs> I'm not using make files anyway. I'm using cubes. Uh, contextual help, that's awesome, F1. Uh, C++ refactoring tools. So I like to use the uh, rename symbol under cursor. That's my favorite. Uh, a lot better than find and replace. Uh, stubbing out C++ implementations from your header is also really cool. Code navigation is great. Probably the number one reason I use Creator is that I can control click on symbols and jump to the definition. Uh, the locator menu. Raise your hand if you don't know what that is. Oh, OK. Check it out. It's in the lower left-hand corner. It's, it's found or brought up by calling Control-K, pressing Control-K. And you can do all sorts of stuff like uh, finding files. That's what I usually use it for. But you can locate symbols, uh, jump to lines of code, even run external commands. So it's pretty neat. Uh, but really, project management. That's the whole reason I'm talking about this. Because by using Cubes and Creator uh, together, we can really improve our developer happiness. Uh, but there's this other thing, this other problem in multi-platform. And that's that you have to leave Linux sometimes. I know that's really scary. But there's something there to help you. And it's called QMU. And I bring up QMU because not everyone knows that there's this great free emulator out there. Uh, so under Linux, it's hardware assisted. And it probably is in your uh, distro package manager. Uh, you can just install it as you normally would any utility, and it works out of the box. It's got a gazillion options, so it's highly scriptable. You're not required to use a UI with it. There's all kinds of reasons why you are going to like this tool if you're not using it already. Uh, it lets you run Windows and OS X in a sandbox inside Linux. Isn't that cool? 
Uh, I can't say that that's always very fast, especially in the OSX case. <laughs> but it, it is possible. In fact, I have some screenshots here to prove it. That's OSX, QMU, and that's Windows. <laughs> Uh, be careful installing the vert IO drivers in the Windows 10 image because you might get a screen like this, just an FYI. <laughs> Luckily, you can just snapshot and boot the older image. Uh, because I knew we had some naysayers in here, uh, I've uploaded my scripts to GitHub in case you want to check them out and try to get your OSX to boot, which it is, yes a bit of a challenge. Okay, getting back to cubes. Uh, this is something I tried to, to draw out because cubes is not always very easy for beginners to figure out. How many of you cubes users took a while to figure out how file tags work? Okay, I'm the only idiot in here, but <laughs> for me this was a tough one. Uh, basically, you have something providing files. That's normally a group to start out with. And you've tagged those files with file tags. A rule consumes those tagged files by looking at the file tags of that file. Easy, right? And then the rule can generate new rules, so, uh, sorry, sorry, new files, uh, which are called artifacts in cubes. And they can have file tags. Or, and then those can get picked up by a file tagger if you really want. Actually, they can get picked up by a group that has a file tags filter. All, all kinds of cool stuff. And that's why I made this a big circle. Because inside a product, which is anything from a C++ application to a dynamic library to, uh, let's say, a PDF file, something that you generate, uh, you can have a chain of rules and artifacts uh, and file taggers. And those all connect to a product type. So a product type is one or more file tags that represent the outputs of that product. In the bigger picture, a product can live in a project. So a typical QBS project, sorry, cubes project, uh, will be a big box like this, uh, containing one or more products. And they have a dependency chain as well. So through modules, we can export different properties uh, that can be shared between products, such as C++ include paths, C++ linker flags. That's why you can create a C++ library, and when you depend on it from your C++ application, you get an implicit linker rule. You don't see it unless you look at the actual command output. So that's pretty nice. Now, if some of you aren't convinced, I'm going to try to say why you should care about this. I'm telling you right now, you do want to program your build. It's wonderful. But uh, why is it wonderful? Well, one reason is that no makefile generation, because we're not generating a makefile, right, makes for a more flexible architecture. We can define abstractions that wouldn't be possible inside a makefile. Because when you generate a makefile, you're thinking, oh, this is a tool chain for a certain platform and a certain version of GNU make or MinGW make or nmake or something, I don't know. Uh, it's very complex and you lose sight of the overall picture that you can define multiple tool chains with common properties and then override those properties, inherit them. It's a very object-oriented build system. You have polymorphism here. It's, it's really cool. So overriding module properties, you can extend and create new tool chains or, or tool chain profiles. So I'm going to dive into some uh, examples where I've actually used this. Uh, my computer's not working, so don't, don't ask me to actually prove it. But it, it, it is possible. Uh, how do I build on Linux a binary that runs on OS X? Well, I create a new profile, 
Uh, earlier, I did QBS set up tool chains and detected Clang from my Linux distro. So I created a new profile that has its base profile set to Clang. That is a profile inheriting Clang. Then I, and I go grab the CC tools port. That has, uh, most importantly, a linker that creates mock O objects or mock O binaries from object files uh, generated by Clang using the Apple ABI. Then I, I go grab that QMU partition I have, uh, or VM I have, and I mount the OSX partition so I can access the headers and, and libraries there. Then in my cubes profile, I adjust all these flags and fire away. Windows works the same way, except that you're way better off just using MinGW because it comes from your package manager, cubes will auto-detect it, and things pretty much just work. That's with GNU Link, of course. You have the GCC shim in there. And it's not exactly ideal for everyone because you don't have the MSVC ABI in that case. So you can also try what we did with OSX. And you can use Clang, override the tuple, the target architecture that's passed to Clang, and then link with LLD. So that's the LLVM linker. I have successfully made binaries that run in Windows this way as well. And if you're looking for inspiration on code review, I have a, a very work in progress, uh, Clang Win32 support using this technique, but uh, it needs a lot of work and it's kind of a mess right now. But if you're welcome to try it. Maybe we'll get that in for a Qt 5.7. Let's see. All right. Case number three, packaging Qt. How many people have done this in their Qt projects? One. I'm going to come back to you when it's question time. <laughs> because it's not exactly easy. Uh, but it, once you get something working, you can free yourself from these star deploy queue tools. Win deploy queue, Mac deploy queue, Android deploy queue. By basically manually listing all of the li libraries that you use in your app and tagging those and creating a product that package th packages them. Now, I would have shown that to you, but this is not my laptop. So, example code question mark is uh, non-existent today. Sorry about that. Wait a second. I can package Qt. I can build Qt applications. Can I build Qt itself? Yes, sort of. So, uh, if you check out the whip slash cubes branch of Qt base, you'll find absolutely nothing new there. However, in Garrett, uh, there's one mo monumental change that I haven't split up yet that you can find. This uh, work in progress of building Qt with cubes. So what's working right now, uh, tools, core, GUI, network, widgets, uh, I've got separate scripts for uh, Qt declarative that seems to be working OK some of the platform plugins, uh, and that's about it. Uh, but it's coming along. So the big question is, is it faster, right? I think that's what we're all wondering. Can I build Qt faster? Well, let's see. I, I tried to make a semi-scientific study of this. Uh, it's hard to compare with QMake because QMake does a lot of things, and, and unless the Cubes project matches everything that QMake is building, it's a bit difficult, so I went item by item and benched it. Oh no, the font sizes aren't right. Um, so that's a little disappointing. Can we make those any smaller? I don't know, okay. Uh, we're gonna lose the, the umph here because the components are gonna go off the page. But uh, we can see that the speed up is over there on the lower left, even though it should be over here on the right. 
Uh, and that's 16% for bootstrap, okay. May maybe you save a few seconds there. Uh, lock, you save a few. Um, I don't know, milliseconds, <laughs> centiseconds. Uh, RCC was a little bit faster, but you can't tell. I can't tell either, but I will tell you this, uh, it gets worse. So Qt Core, Qt GUI, Qt Widgets all build considerably slower, about 35% slower in this setup. I really wish I could have shown you that. But why so slow? Maybe there's possible overhead in the build graph and all the cool stuff that Cubes does. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe that this Cubes project I created has a sync cube create, uh, replacement that's written in JavaScript is really poorly written. Uh, that's probably true, but I don't know if that's the real reason it's slower. Uh, but then I just thought about this. Oh, I haven't enabled PCH. I haven't enabled precompiled headers in this Cubes build. So uh, let's level the playing field. Here are the same benchmarks, PCH disabled, and bootstrap, same mock strap. Ah, we ran out of the punch line is gone again. Well, the bottom line is Qt Core, Qt GUI, uh, Qt Network all built faster than the QMake build with no PCH. So about 25% faster. You can come see my numbers uh, later. I, I'm right outside. We have a little booth there. So I do hope that once I get around to getting the PCH product built in, that we'll see equivalent or, or better numbers in the Qs build when compared to QMake. With that, uh, some other tips. Don't echo to the command line if you don't need to, because that can save some CPU cycles. I knocked off three seconds on the widgets build, which is the largest module uh, that I tested. If you want to know what's taking so long, you can also pass log time to cubes. It helps you out. OK, uh, final topic, case X, because it doesn't really exist yet. But this is cubes Linux. So imagine a cubes project where uh, we create the file system, we build a C library of your choice, maybe it's glibc, maybe it's muscle, maybe it's bionic, uh, build the kernel, build the bootloader, utilities, libraries, apps, sorry, app libraries like Qt, and then the apps. Finally, we put that all together into one image and ship it. Put it on an SD card or on a uh, NFS or upload it to an FTP server, you name it. So the idea here is that we replace Yocto or, or whatever we are using to build our embedded board with cubes. Then we have a massive cubes project where we can see all the dependencies inside Creator. Sounds like a pretty nice idea to me. Definitely a good benchmark for cubes and Creator. So with that, I'll leave you to imagine all the possibilities of cubes and enjoy your code. Thank you. We don't really have time for questions, so he has a booth, as he said. Go find him. And um, well, next speaker now.